300 days ago, I laid the foundation for what would become a sprawling rainforest teeming with life. In the water, and on the land, every creature will play a crucial part in the maintenance of this intricate little ecosystem. I started by adding an acrylic tower which would be my water feature. Using some lava rock and aquarium foam I created a false bottom. Then I trimmed down the aquarium foam for texture. I then layered it using aquarium safe silicone and activated carbon. I added wood, rocks, and planters cups. I repeated the process on the backdrop. I dropped a red LED light in the acrylic tower and used clear silicone to attach dragonstone. I sprinkled some more activated carbon on top for a realistic volcanic look. In the meantime, I'd gotten some mail. I had decided to turn my polydarium into an endangered animal conservation effort. I had received five tadpoles of an endangered poison dart frog, the Ranitomea Fantastica True Nominal. Kinda sounds like a Harry Potter spell, doesn't it? I used Great Stuff Expanding Foam to fill in all the gaps on the backdrop, which was my favorite part of the build process. I shaved it down with a razor blade after it cured and used silicone as well as some cocoa peat for texture. It all took about a month, but it was finally starting to come together. Next, I was ready to plant. I opted for plants that will thrive in a high humidity environment. I also installed the Mist King Automatic Mister. We were finally ready to add our first life in the form of some tropical isopods. I also added a culture of springtails. They will serve as our cleanup crew and eat any of the decaying plant matter as well as any bioactive animal waste. My aquatic life also arrived in the mail. Since this is a rainforest polydarium, I opted for fish out of the Amazon basin, consisting mainly of pencil fish and gold tetras. I also sent them something back. I added an acrylic sheet to help keep in the humidity. It was finally all planted and had its first signs of life. It also looked really cool with the fog machine, and Simba would agree with me. Tadpoles were sprouting legs, so I turned their cups on the side so they could crawl out of the water. I needed to create a bioactive nursery for them, so I sacrificed my beta fish's tank to build one. But don't worry, I hooked him up with a new crib. Actually, I made a video on how to do that. I'll post a link in the description in case you want to learn how to build your own. I added purple dwarf isopods as well as some more springtails to the bioactive nursery. The moisture on the glass started to give away hints of the springtail culture really taking root inside the polydarium. I checked underneath some foliage and sure enough there was a sprouting colony. I hooked them up with a little bit of fish food so they could have some protein and let them do their thing. I started finding life in my polydarium that I didn't personally add, such as these tiny snails, these worms, as well as these slugs, which laid some eggs and multiplied rather quickly. Here's a baby slug on the glass. Little animals weren't the only random thing that started to sprout out all around my polydarium. All around the sphagnum moss, Little plants started to sprout, as well as these little mushrooms. But the most impressive of all was this little guy right here. It started out small, but would ultimately become one of the coolest features of my polydarium. I actually tried to wrap it around my water feature, thinking it would grow up towards the back, but it insisted on sprawling towards the bottom and just looking cool. I 
I really couldn't have asked for a better placement of my freebie plant. After a hundred days, the tank had cycled. Also, my dart frogs had started to come out of the water. I set them in their nursery. I unexpectedly had to relocate for work, so I did rehome the fish. I had bought the wrong misting system, so I didn't commit to reinstalling it when I arrived at my location. You get better coverage hand misting anyway, and it makes your arms frickin' jacked. Granny Tomea Fantastica dart frogs are not easy to come by. I usually spend weeks scouring different breeders until one of them will have a couple of them available for sale. Good thing it came from a breeder too, because if this came from the wild, the toxins in the skin would definitely have killed me. But since it's not from the wild and bred in captivity, they're non-poisonous. It's what they eat out in the wild that gives them their poisonous properties. Speaking of eating, that's pretty much all these little guys do. They just hang out by their plants and eat anything that they can fit in their mouth. I of course have to supplement their diet with some flightless fruit flies, which I breed at home. After a quick calcium dusting, it was lunchtime. They are elusive and can be kind of shy. I used fruit fly media to draw out the flies towards the front of the tank, which ultimately would attract the frogs. This one got them a two for one. The slugs started to become a problem and were eating my plants. I left lettuce in there overnight to draw them out, and then I feed them to my tortoises as a little snack. They actually really loved slugs. Kind of gross, I know. When I first planted this little guy, I had no idea that it would turn into an actual canopy, and in turn, I actually had a legitimate rainforest effect because of it. The plants were starting to get so thick that when you were at the bottom of the tank, hardly any light was coming through anymore. The Rex Pagonia had the most drastic transformation. It almost died and instead grew to the front of the tank and became the centerpiece of my polydarium. These before and after shots emphasize just how much of a jungle this polydarium has become. And I absolutely love it. All the contrasting colors and the way that the vines intertwine, it really gives it a prehistoric look. A couple of the frogs in my nursery were old enough and I actually added them to the tank as well. Since the tadpoles that these grew out of were from a different breeder, I now have a more strong genetic line. But I still kept my eye out just in case somebody would list some more frogs. I finally hit the mother load when somebody had a batch of eight frogs on offer. I of course bought them all. Now have frogs from three different breeders. I added some old protein and pre-workout cups to the side of the windows in hopes that they would lay their eggs in there. That was all about a week ago, so now time will only tell. What do you guys think? Will my little conservation effort be a bust or the ultimate success? Let me know in the comments. You can check out the full detailed build video here.